Hey guys, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Kay the Bookworm, and in today's episode of my Arthur interviews, I have a great person with me. I follow him on Twitter. We talk about a lot of TV shows more than writing. <laughs> we are both Snowfall fans, and I asked him if he wanted to be an interviewee for my show. He told me, yeah, I read two of his work, which is amazing. Endless Mind with him and Sin Alexander, and I also just got in reading his newest book that just came out, Thug Therapy, uh, rom a real Romancing a Real Run, excuse me. I have with me today, Arthur, pronounce it for me because I totally forgot that during fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Cartier. Cartier, so how are you doing today, sir? I am doing great, how are you doing? I'm good, it's hot in my room right now. I'm trying to have the fan on, but I have all these lights on, so bear with me. So my first two questions for you is, how did you get started and why did you get started? Well, writing for me has always been a form of therapy, even as I was getting older um, at a young age, probably from 10 to 12, I was already writing short stories. Um, I was already deep into the world of writing and literature as a whole. Um, so what the funny thing is, as I graduated high school, um, mm -hmm. I was already, like I said, I was already doing short stories and it was just something I did to pass the time. Um, not too long after I graduated though, I started to post a few of them on Facebook. Um, and it just, it's like, started to slowly become a thing for me um just posted them weekly if it went from weekly to daily and then it just became a thing where i was like you know what i probably should start writing my own book like this is taking over more than i thought it was so i'm like let me, let me try to do something with writing my own book so uh my freshman year in college this is when i was at a technical college here in my city um every time i would leave class my final class of the day, I would go straight to the computer lab while a lot of people were writing or doing homework. I was writing my book and trying to do homework. So I would spend about two hours every day writing this book, my first book. And it wasn't too long. I would say this first book was probably a good 30 to 35K because I didn't know what I was doing. I just wrote the story until I felt like it was done. And once it was, I went through the whole process of learning how, first of all, what a paperback or how to get to create them on paperbacks and how to get them out to the world. Um, after that, I started passing them out in the school. I was passing them out to all my friends, people I didn't even know, <laughs> teachers, whoever. And so it just became a thing where I was like, you know what, I should take this even further and find a publisher. So I started adding all types of different authors, um, just trying to slowly get my feet wet with the whole process. And by luck, by God, I found my first publisher. This was around 2015. And uh, she taught me a lot more than I knew when I was just on my own for the first time. So she took me on. I stayed with her for about a year or two. And then, I, as they say, you know, uh, from there, it was just up. It was up for me. So it led me to where I am now, five to six years later. And I'm <laughs> still driving myself crazy writing these crazy books. That's Dope, man. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Cause that's so because for me, I started writing during the pandemic. Okay. I wrote my first book during the pandemic, which is not completed at all. <laughs> not done yet. I think I last time I looked, it was like 40, 41K. And like I didn't even put a dent into it. Cause like, like you just said, like you just write until you feel like the story's done. So yeah. I'll go back to it maybe one day, but not right now. So being a black man in an indie world that is predominantly, like basically predominantly over, like kind of predominantly with more so black women, how do you feel like that you can strive through that? Or that you are trying to do it, I should say. Well, I mean, I think a lot of male authors, the thing that we had to realize and think I realized very quickly on was that we have to have our own identity, something that makes us us. You know, um, there's a lot of male authors that are finding their identity now and finding how to truly like stand out. You know, um, I realize now predominantly it is a lot more women than there are males. And that's crazy because growing up, you know, I read from a lot of very popular, very legendary male authors like Eric Jerome Dickey, Donald Goins, you know, Carl Weber, a lot of these guys who are like still here today, Eric Jerome Dickey, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I learned a lot from a lot of those guys and seeing now how the landscape has changed and now women are taking over and rightfully so because there are a lot of great women out here writing great stuff um there's for me it was just all about standing out 
and always being myself. And as they always say, your tribe will find you when it does. And it seems like now my tribe is finding me and then, you know, I'm evolving from just being another male officer in the game to being someone that really you don't have to really define as just being that male author. You know, I'm the guy that you you're going to read my stuff because you love my stuff, just like everybody else. And, you know, it is just a weird evolution how I started. I started off very popular and it seemed like over time I was kind of losing myself. And um, I think readers can always identify with that, too. They know when somebody really isn't there. They, they're not feeling it. The passion mm -hmm. isn't there. And for a while, my passion wasn't there. And now it just feels like I'm back to just being re reinvigorated and, and being motivated and hungry and just ready to entertain more than ever before. So, you know, it's just it's, it's humbling to see all the success in my last book and to attract all these new readers and get all these messages and get everybody saying that what I've been writing has been touching them a lot. And I'm becoming one of the authors they got to go to when they see a book dropping, drop everything and read it. You know, um, it's, it's really humbling. It's crazy. So do you think that after, like, like, like you just said, how you were up and then you kind of went down, do you think that during that time you were down, did you like rebrand? Did you reimage yourself to where you could get back to where you are, we were before? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I started off, writing mainly erotica and while that is still my first love I feel like every everything in life needs to be rebranded at some point I feel like to, to keep a fresh coat of paint for me I needed a fresh coat of paint um I started I feel like I was writing a lot of stagnant stuff honestly uh, to be as transparent as I possibly can it's just I felt like a lot of what I was writing was just I was writing more or less for the money you know and when mm. you're under a publisher you start to feel like that you start to feel like man like you know when I was indie i was writing what i wanted to write i was writing for the love of writing and over time you start to feel like what am i writing this for like who am i writing this for i'm not feeling it so i don't feel like they're gonna feel it and i feel like that was the moment i started to slowly tread down in terms of my motivation in terms of my passion for this industry and so i just knew something needed to change so you know i think going back indie was um was the best thing for me i feel better i feel i even feel healthier I feel mentally healthier. And that's the most important thing. So if your mental isn't there, I think that your writing won't be there either. And even when it is still there, you're still not, you know, your mental is still in the same position. So I want to make sure when I'm writing, I'm also still kind of like mentally there as well. So that's, I like that. I, I like that. And I like that segue that you just said, because we're going to talk about your new indie book that just came out, Thug, Ther Th Thug Therapy. So I have just one question. Why did you make King's mom such a bitch? Ooh, uh, <laughs> well, I, I got to tell you, you know, the Gina character is, I think every character in that book and a lot of those scenes in that book have something to do with my real life. Um, mm. They're re the references, Easter eggs to my real life. And I think that that Gina character I've, I've met that character a few times through different aspects of life. Um, you know, obviously me and my mom, we have a great relationship now. Um, there's been times in my past life where I've met other women who, I, I guess I could say I've been around a lot of women growing up. Mm -hmm. And the Gina character is based on a few different people in particular. And in, in her villainous as character, where she was through that journey in that book, um, yeah, I saw, I witnessed that journey. I've witnessed that journey a lot in my life. And um, she was most definitely, of all the characters in that book, she's the one who resonated with me the most because she's the one who, like in my life, that I've been able to experience the most. So uh, she, yeah, she was quite, I've, I've had a lot of reviews about her. Um, people messaging me and just like, I want to just go through this book and grab Gina. Right. <laughs> and so it's, it's like, like, like for a lady, if you haven't read the book, it's basically about Kingdom and Corin, and they meet over a dispute about Thordash and Denny's. And I agree with Kingdom. Denny's is disgusting. Uh, ill. Anyway, um, <laughs> but. Kingdom's brother dies right after at a club when he's about to graduate. He just graduated, about to graduate. He's a graduate, graduate college. Can't really remember. It's been a minute since I read the book. And at the morgue, his mother blames Kingdom for the killing. And it's just like, what are you, what are you talking about? It reminded me of the scene when Ricky died from Boys in the Hood. 
and yeah. his mother, you know, blamed Doughboy for the situation. And he was just like, I wasn't even there. And so what exactly. the fuck? And then when Kingdom and his girlfriend at the time, she he blamed her. And it was just a lot. And her, like the girlfriend, I praise her for leaving. But at the same time, I think in my personal opinion, calling to check up on him, no. Just yeah. three separate ways, leave it alone and call it a day. Exactly. And then going on to Corinne's side, her boyfriend couldn't fuck. Boyfriend couldn't, <laughs> couldn't fuck. The boyfriend couldn't basically support her dream because she's an Arthur in the book. And then that, along with trying to find, trying to be a big sister and work out for her sister Chrissy, then dealing with um, her best friend's cousin, who was, in my personal opinion, I feel like Ashley should have did more. Yeah. Granted, I understand family is everything, but at the same time, if my cousin is downplaying my best friend, who I've known for years, the way Aries was downplaying her, I would have said something. Oh, yeah. Like, I agree with you. I would, I would have said something, period. And so, guys, it's a really good book. I don't want to spoil too much. We just know with a lot of twists and turns in it. Um, people died in the book, but they deserve to die in that book. But it's a good book, so definitely get it. And then I first book I read by you was Endless Mind, the a Sin and Cure Urban Romance that you did with Sin Alexander. That reminded me of a bond of a modern day body and Clive. Yeah. When we first started writing that book, um, we were first off, we had two different ideas for our collaboration. Uh, this was my first collab ever mm -hmm. um, in the writing industry. So I was nervous because I'm like, OK, I know our writing styles kind of mesh, but she's more, you know, she's done like urban fairy tale novels and all this different cool stuff. And I'm like, Which how can good, I? By the way. I read all of them. Excellent. Yeah, check absolutely. Go check them out. Like she's dope. Um, beyond dope and I tell her that all the time you know and the thing is she was more into that world and I was still heavily into like hood and erotica and you know trying to figure out a way to mesh our our different writing styles and combine with this story of like like you said a modern day Bonnie and Clyde I was like you know what we can I think we create something that again it's kind of I won't say it's based on our real lives but there's like little small implements of it in there um, through the the different love interests that our characters had and just like how they came together there's a lot of that that's like kind of shades of reality mm -hmm. um so I, I think that was one of my most intense and also exciting books to have written with somebody is just it's for her um you know it was she's done collapse before but she also kind of taught me different ways of like you know, creating and t telling a story, you know, I got to give credit to her, even with my own books, you know, she's taught me a lot, you know, she's my editor as well. So she's very knowledgeable, um, knowledgeable beyond her years. She's just, I can't say enough about her. So I'm so glad that you read that because it's, it's definitely one of my favorites as well. So yeah, got it sitting good. on my, my, uh, my desk right now. So oh, it was really good. I definitely enjoyed it. And you say you do erotica a lot. And I remember I messaged you. Oh, I com I tagged you, Moon Bay, who is my girl. Shout out to her. And it was somebody else that I met that I tagged. I can't remember. And I was writing my book, Sweet and Sour. And it's kind of like an erotica. How my question to y'all is how the hell do you write all these good eye sex scenes? <laughs> well, I, I felt like my sex scene was good and I have my reviewer said it was really good but I'm thinking to myself it wasn't good enough hey listen you and me both I sometimes I'll sit and I'll be like yo this sex scene seems so dull like I was in this latest this new book that I'm writing I was it starts off with a sex scene you know and I that used to be my bread and butter just either starting off with a sex scene or it's a major one somewhere in the book right so mm -hmm. I was just looking at it and I was like, this don't feel like the typical Cartier sex scene. It feels kind of dry. Uh, for me, I, a lot of mine came from either things I've done or things I wanted to do. Oh, <laughs> gosh, and, okay. And I tell people all the time when you write these sex scenes, you just got to go all out with it. You cannot, I know sometimes a lot of readers or writers are shy. They like, I don't want to, you know, write something that I'm, I'm afraid my mom might come across and read or something of that nature. But when you're an erotic author or you dive into that genre, you got to go all out, you know, 
you got to have intense passion. You got to make love to that, that book. That's that scene. You know, it's almost like you're trying to make love to the readers, to their mind. You know, you got to go all out and leave it all out there. They can't be shy. You know, it's no holes barred. Take everything off and just create, you know, sometimes you might need a glass of wine or something. You might, me, I hit the blunt sometimes <laughs> before I go back. You got to take breaks. So I'd, I'd be like, shoot, I don't, let me come back to this a little, you know, a little bit later on. Watch the porn or something, you know. You just, you got to find your inspiration, you know, just with everything in writing. But erotica for sure. Find your, where's your inspiration? You got to go find it and just put it all out there in your book and you'll be fine. Cool. Well, my inspiration for my scene was, uh, I don't probably know if you heard it or not, but it's a podcast, erotic podcast called Black Widow. Mm. I don't think I've heard of that, but I need to. Yes. I need to check it out. You need to check it out. Uh, the uh, the creator is Eric Dizzy. I'm a friend of his. Me and him are cool, whatever. And he writes nothing but erotica, like podcasts, like different stories. It's basically like mm. sh- like short stories that you listen to. Oh. Listen. It'll take you there. It'll t- it takes you there. It takes you there. But yeah, so that scene, well, the big scene was definitely inspired from him. But I know when I have to get into the genre, I want to dabble into it. I'm not like saying that I'm a full blown one, but just writing the scene, I'm like, I don't think this is, this is it. And I'd be so, and I'm not scared at all. I have a podcast called Brutal Honesty, and I talk about everything on that podcast with no hold back, no barriers, no nothing. But still writing a sex scene and then like you have so many reviewers and readers who be like, this is erotica. We only had like one sex scene, that sex scene was dull. And you be like, damn, like I really tried hard. So like, I guess because exactly. seeing you, like reading your work, reading Moons, reading like other people that I inspired that are write erotica, I'm like, all right, I think I could do this. Might be scared to do it, but I gotta put my foot out there and try, so. You can do it. Most I, definitely. You can I, do it. Okay. Um, my next question is that you wrote your book, The Therapy. Are you, you don't have to answer, but are you in therapy? And if so, like, how did your experience in therapy help out Kingdom's therapy? Because he was very adamant about it. Like, he did not yeah. want to go in it or nothing. And as a Black man, well, as not even Black men, just Black people in general, therapy is such shame upon yeah on, it know? is like not now but what like, i'll say a little bit now but now a lot of people are going through therapy trying to break those generation curses for me definitely i've been in therapy therapy for almost two years now and i see an amazing amazing experience and growth within me so for you writing this book and you said this book was your therapy and writing period is your therapy how did that you know how did your experiences like make you or make you grow into a better person well i am very uh, i am an advocate for mental health um through my various forms of social media facebook usually though uh, i post a lot about you know mental health amongst the black community amongst black men a lot of that comes from me growing up especially more or less in my early 20s um i, I was just dealing a lot with uh, my mental health and a lot of the troubles that I went through was just like, where do I find a source, you know, or a form of therapy for me? Like it became really bad when I was 25 going all the way until 27. I was just like, man, like there was times where I thought about suicide, you know, and that was where a lot of the deepest writing, that's honestly where thug therapy even came from um, was just, I wanted to find a way to kind of not relive, but just tell my story through a character's eyes, you know, and be able to talk about therapy and talk about mental health and talk about depression and all these different things that I do. Like as men, we always feel like we can't talk about uh, whether it was with a loved one or just in the public world. And I I want to change that. I want to do my part to change that. And so, yeah, for me, it was after my couple of battles, really bad battles with depression, um, it became a thing of like, how do I grow from this um how do i get past this and be able to help others and that is my goal for the future is to help others help other black men you know the black community in some way be able to feel like they have somewhere somebody that they can talk to they have a space that's all we all we really need um and so for me yeah i do not just the usual form of therapy which is talking to a licensed therapist but also journaling 
has become a major thing for me. You know, I've dealt with a lot of tragedies over the last year or two, really bad tragedies that have really taken me back and made me lay in bed for days. You know, um, I've dealt with a lot of setbacks, a lot of different things that have triggered my mental health. And I think journaling has really helped me a lot. Um, just taking two hours at best and just putting on some music and just writing, writing my soul away. You know, no fiction, just all just straight from the heart. Um, and I do, of course, also have people now that I do talk to. Um, I do my everyday walk in the park, whether it's snowy outside, whether it's 95, sweating, you know, mm-hmm. I take my walks. Um, I sit by the water. Obviously, I always say talk to God. Um, and of course, you know, get a licensed therapist, somebody that you can talk to, someone that will help you see things from a different perspective. Um, like you said, for you, it's helped a lot. It's, for me, it's helped a lot as well. It's helped me more than I could ever imagine because where I was two to three years ago, oh man, that guy was just out there. Like I was just so low. I was at my lowest. I didn't know how long I was going to have to still be breathing on this earth. And so to be where I am now is beyond, I'm just beyond grateful for life. And I want to be able to help others feel like they have a safe space. They don't, you know, I've seen so many of these younger kids and black men, black women committing suicide, you know, athletes, public figures, you know, Robin Williams, I always use that example. Um, some of my, one of my best friends um, in high school, she actually committed suicide as well, um, actually on the day of her graduation, which was wow. so heartbreaking. So um, it's just one of those things where I feel like I have more than an importance. I have a reason to go out and help the younger generation. You know, my little cousins, I always see them. And one of them in particular, you know, he's, he's, and he reminds me of me. He's in his shell. He's still trying to find himself. And I, I, I want to be able to make sure that that younger generation grows up and they always know that they can come to me because I always feel like I never had anybody to go to, to talk to, you know, and that's where writing for me was my form of therapy because a lot for a lot of my life, writing was my best friend as well. And I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm important to somebody because I want everybody to know that there is somebody out there that loves them and that there is somebody out there that supports them, that, you know, embraces them. There are a lot of people who feel like they don't have anybody. And, um, and that's really what I want to change. And I think I was trying to, to, you know, tell people that through thug therapy as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope I did my job. I know a a couple of people messaged me and they were just like, you know, this book did a lot, um, to really educate me and focus, you know, the focus on mental health was something that changed a lot of people's lives and really helped them kind of see things from a different perspective, especially when it does come to black men's mental health. So I just, um, I don't know, it's always hard to talk about it but it's also something that I've grown accustomed to now and which is a total change for me a couple of years ago because I really would not be talking to you about my mental health <laughs> at all so I'm proud of myself and I just want to make sure that I can help somebody else even if it's just one person just become just that comfortable to be able to be vulnerable um especially amongst black men because I want us to be able to know that it's okay to be vulnerable with somebody um, I know we always say that, especially with women, we always, you know, man, I always see these statuses like you can't talk to women, you can't vent to women, you can't cry with women and all this other stuff. And that's not true. Um, there is always somebody out there. And I've be- known firsthand now that there is somebody out there that will help you. Um, so just don't be afraid to find help. <laughs> that is very true. That is very, 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 very true. So before we wrap up, I have three more questions for someone who wants to be where you are. What tips would you give them? And please don't give me the mediocre just right. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely not just right because there is a lot about the writing industry that people will not tell you um, for their own reasons. I say that number one, um, Always retain your creativity. Don't let anybody hinder your creativity. Don't let anybody tell you that what you want to write is crap or whatever. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't have a place in the writing industry. I know there are a lot of people that look for help and don't know where to find it because there are a lot of shady people in the writing industry. I'm just going to be 100. (laughs) I cannot hold back on that. There are people that will cheat you out of your money, out of your love of writing. 
more importantly, there are people that I've seen come into the writing industry excited about sharing their projects. And then the next year they already quit and their mental health was lower than it was when they joined. Um, for a, a short time, that was me too. I say never let anybody hinder your creativity. Always keep your creativity. Never be afraid to stand on your own if you feel like that's what you want to do. Um, but also study, you know, study the game, study the industry, study the way that you see the market moving in terms of what people like, you know what I mean? But not even just that, study these different promoters and, you know, creators and cover designers and different things of that nature. Study and watch the game. Invest is a key word. Invest in everything that you want to do. Don't be afraid to invest a lot of money into what you want to do to get to where you want to go. Um, so, and of course, obviously, uh, just right. No, I'm just joking, but <laughs> no, but, uh, definitely, you know, do whatever you can to re retain your passion because without passion, you will not go far in the writing industry, um, because that's where it starts. That's where it's going to end. So just keep your heart in it. Um, always invest in yourself before anything else. And again, just retain that creativity. Don't let anybody tell you that that you got to do this or do that. Just go with your gut, go with your head and just keep going, keep grinding. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I like that a lot. Thank you for that. And my final question, what can people expect from you this year? A lot of crazy, a lot of craziness. Uh, being indie now is allowing me more freedom um, and that's not to be a knock on my, my old publisher. I love her to death. She will always be my best friend. She taught me a lot. Um, she is always going to be somebody that I look to as inspiration. But me now, um, I'm just, I feel like I'm a loose cannon out here on in these literary streets. I'm just writing different things. I'm jumping back into the erotic genre a little bit more than I was before. So you can expect a lot of sexiness. You can expect a lot of the same toxicity and wild and just out there storylines. I got something coming that's a spinoff from Thug Therapy. It's going to focus on another black male um, that was a part of that book. His name was Amari. Um, oh! He was Corinne's best friend. So okay. he's going to get the full the story. Killer. Yeah, he's he going to be with Ashley? Or do you want to say uh, I mean, she's, uh, I mean, she, she's going to be me. in it. She's going to be in it. Um, okay. She's definitely going to have a part in it. It's okay, going to focus directly on him and gonna have some some more of ashley in there for, and you know unfortunately with ashley comes aries as well oh, so God. she will be there uh, as well Jesus. okay um <laughs> that is the i, I want to say right now that is probably the biggest project of this year it is the one i'm gonna take my sweet time on um it's something that i take just as serious i'm not gonna say i don't take all my writing seriously but this mm -hmm. one i'm taking just beyond serious to the point where I stay up pacing around my room like okay I want to do this I want to do that I want to do this I want to do that um but he's his character to me is just another kingdom he's a guy that's got a lot of dark uh he's got a very dark past he's got a darker past in kingdom mm -hmm. um his parents were oh they were they were you think Gina was something his parents were something as well in their own way um and he's got a story to tell and of course Ashley will be there as well um so you can look forward to that this summer. I want to say, estimate it, May, um, early June, by early June for sure, he'll be out there. So look out for that. I got some other little small, little, little quick little, cute little joints coming. Um, I got something dropping for 420 <clears throat> that I think that people will <laughs> really, really enjoy. Uh, I'm working on that as we speak. So just, you know, I'm going to be out there peeking my head in, popping out, dropping some joints. And of course, yeah, like I said, look out for Amari. And I'm looking for something else to drop in July. And I think I'm going to take the rest of the summer and just chill and just find somewhere to go, some beach to go to, nice Corona, blunt in my hand, some books in my hand. I'm going to catch up on my reading. So, uh, you know, when you decide that it's time to show the world what you got, you drop that book. You know, you definitely hit me up because I'm going to be looking forward to it. I want it signed. I got you. So I can be, I got be you. somewhere on the beach <laughs> and I can just be reading that with a beer in my hand. I definitely look forward to some heavy reading nights for sure. So, you know, before everybody else, you got to hit me up because I'll be your number one reader. I got you. I'll definitely check I it out. That. I got yeah. you. And, and let you know what I think. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me.
this was really fun to do. Guys, please check out his work. Thug, Thug Therapy, Romancing a Real One, and Endless Mind with Sin Alexander. There's a lot more books that I need to catch up on, but those are the only two that I've read so far. Um, drop your socials for me real quick. Oh, for sure. Uh, so if you're big on Twitter, I'm always prevalent on Twitter. If you are big into the world of power or Snowfall or Godfather of Harlem or Bel Air, because Bel Air is a really good show and I didn't really think it is. was going to be. Really uh, so I apologize to that cast because I was bashing them for weeks. Like, oh, I'm the first so trash. I'm with you. I didn't think so either until I watched the first episode. I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah, this is you this is me. not uh you you know, trailers kind of fooled me a little yeah, bit. You so you know, if you're into any of those shows, hit me up on Twitter. I'm always using a hashtag for those shows, Author Cartier. Um, look me up, you know, we could talk. I'm always doing my live tweets whenever a show drops. I try to at least. So um I'm on there. But if you also on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, hit me up, Cartier Julian, my full name. Um, usually on there now, I try to stay off because they always blocking me for something. <laughs> so uh, I might get on there and just post updates as well as Instagram, Author Cartier as well. I post a lot of my book updates on there. I do sell book covers as well. So I, sometimes I'll be on there doing that. But other than that, yeah, you just, I guess you could just find me on Amazon. Um, type in my first name and all my books will pop up. Erotica, Hood Novels urban thrillers i got them all so there's something in there for everybody so okay. okay well guys i will leave all of cartier stuff in the com in the set comment section below please check him out support another black arthur especially another black male arthur because there are not a lot of us a lot of them excuse me in the indie world so please 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 support he to me is like another drew Davis coleman Oh, I appreciate that. That's a major compliment. <laughs> I love that man. I love his wife. He's uh, dope. Cartel is like my favorite urban series of all time. I have all books. I have all seven. Well, actually now eight books of the book because they did a spinoff. So yes, definitely support him, guys. For real, for real. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to follow me, I am at K Renee on Twitter, K the Bookworm underscore underscore on Instagram, and to Donna Rose writes on instagram as well as sedona rose on sedona rose writes as well on twitter uh get my books so my books are out and have paperbacks sweet and sour which just came out last month and the one that I just came, that came out uh, December of last year and until next time guys read what you want to write write what you want to read and i'll talk to you guys later bye